Hi, welcome back to my channel. In the previous video, I showed you how to use Twilio for automated WhatsApp communication. In this video, I'll show you how to use OpenWA to create a programmed WhatsApp response, which I'll later integrate with Node-RED. For more information, feel free to visit the official website at docs.openwa.dev. Just a quick note, in this video, Node.js and Node-RED are already installed. If you need help installing them, you can easily find tutorials online. In this video, I'm using a virtual private server running Debian 11 as the operating system. First, I connect to the VPS using PuTTY. The first step is to make sure that Node.js, NPM, and NPX are installed. We can check them by running these commands. This confirms that NPX is available. Now let's move on to setting up our project directory. This command takes us to the home directory of the current user. Then, create a new folder named Wabot, which will be our project folder. Then, we enter the Wabot folder to start working inside it. Next, we initialize our project and install the OpenWA library. This command quickly creates a package.json file with default settings. It's used to manage the dependencies of our project. Then, installs the latest version of it openwa slash wa automate, which is the main library we'll use to control WhatsApp. Please note, the installation process may take a few minutes depending on your internet connection, because the library has several dependencies to download. The next step is to create a file called index.js inside the wabot folder. This file will be the main script of our WhatsApp bot. It's where we'll write the code to launch, and control the bot using the OpenWA library. In other words, index.js is the starting point of our application. I will use a simple code first. This code will start the WhatsApp bot using the OpenWA library. In this code, we call the create function from an OpenWA slash WA automate to start the WhatsApp bot. The next step is to install Visual Studio Code because PuTTY doesn't allow us to view the QR code. Since we need to scan the QR code to authenticate WhatsApp, it's more convenient to use a graphical editor like Visual Studio Code. You can download Visual Studio Code from its official website. Once installed, you can use it to edit and run your Node.js code directly, and you'll be able to see the QR code in the integrated terminal. Skip this step if you already have Visual Studio Code installed. Next, in Visual Studio Code, Go to the extensions view and search for remote SSH. The remote SSH extension allows you to connect to a remote machine, like your VPS, over SSH directly from Visual Studio Code. This means you can edit files and run commands on your VPS as if you're working locally on your computer, all within the versus code interface. Next, open the terminal in Visual Studio Code and connect to your VPS using the SSH protocol by entering the following command. To avoid errors when running index.js, you need to install a few dependencies first in the terminal, run the following command. These libraries are necessary for running the headless browser that OpenWA uses to interact with WhatsApp. Installing them ensures that your bot runs smoothly without missing dependencies. Next, in the wabot directory, run the index.js file by typing the following command, node index.js. When you run this command, Node.js will execute the index.js script. The script will initiate the WhatsApp bot using the OpenWA library. During this process, a QR code will be generated and displayed in the terminal. This QR code is used to authenticate the bot with WhatsApp. To complete the authentication, open WhatsApp on your smartphone, go to the QR code scanner in the app, and scan the QR code displayed in the terminal. Once the QR code is successfully scanned, your bot will be authenticated, and the connection between your WhatsApp account and the bot will be established. You'll see the message WhatsApp bot is running in the terminal, indicating that everything is set up and running smoothly. Next, I will edit index.js file to add a new function that listens for incoming messages. This code will make the bot respond automatically when it receives a message with the word Halo. When the bot detects that the received message's body is Halo, it will reply with a message. The function client on message is used to monitor any incoming messages. Once a message is received, the bot checks if the content of the message matches Halo, and if it does, the bot sends a reply back to the sender. Now, go back to the terminal and run index.js again with the following command, node index.js. Once you see the WhatsApp bot is running, 
Message in the terminal, open the WhatsApp application on a different smartphone with a different phone number. Then, send a message with the text Halo to the WhatsApp number that the bot is connected to. You will notice that the WhatsApp bot will respond automatically, just as we set up in index.js. The bot will send the reply. This shows that the bot is successfully receiving and replying to messages based on the setup we programmed in the script. The next step is to install PM2 by running the following command. PM2 is a process manager for Node.js applications, which helps you run and manage your Node.js applications in the background. When you use PM2, your application, such as the WhatsApp bot, will continue running even after you close the terminal or reboot the server. Additionally, PM2 automatically restarts the application if it crashes, ensuring the bot remains active without interruption. It also offers features like logging and process monitoring, making it a powerful tool for managing Node.js applications in production. To ensure your Wabot runs automatically, follow these steps using PM2. After installing PM2, start your bot and configure PM2 to make it restart automatically when the system reboots. This way, the bot will keep running even after a restart or if the terminal is closed. Once you've set it up, run PM2 save to save the current process list. This ensures PM2 remembers your bot and restarts it when needed. You can check the status of your Wabot at any time with PM2 to see if it's running. Additionally, you can view the logs to monitor the bot's performance or troubleshoot any issues. The next step is to install Express. Express is a minimal web framework for Node.js that simplifies the process of building web applications and API. By using Express, you can easily set up routes, handle HTTP requests, and integrate additional features more efficiently. This index.js file creates a WhatsApp bot using the OpenWA library, an Express server, and integrates with Node-RED. The file also sets up an Express server with an API endpoint, slash API slash send message. This allows external systems, like Node-RED, to send messages to WhatsApp through the bot by making HTTP requests. In essence, this script connects WhatsApp with Node-RED, allowing automated message handling and integration between the two systems. After editing the index.js file, don't forget to restart the WaBot with PM2 to apply the changes. You can restart the bot by using the PM2 restart command. Once restarted, check the logs to ensure everything is working correctly and to see if any errors are occurring. You can view the logs using PM2 logs to monitor the bot's output and verify that it is running without any issues. If there are any errors in the logs, they will provide helpful details to troubleshoot and resolve any problems. Here is a simple node red flow that receives messages from the WaBot via a webhook URL and sends a reply back to the sender. The HTTP and node listens for incoming post requests at the slash WhatsApp in URL. The function node processes the incoming message by extracting the sender's number and setting a response message. Finally, the HTTP request node sends the reply back to the sender using the WaBot API. The flow listens for incoming messages, processes them, and sends a reply back to the sender using the bot's API. Now, let's test by sending a WhatsApp message. Once the message is sent, you can check the debug node to see the incoming payload, which contains various data like the sender's name and message content. This payload will be used for further processing in our flow. Additionally, you will also see the response message sent back to the sender via node red. If everything is set up correctly, the reply should be successfully delivered to the sender without any issues. Next, I will modify the index.js file by adding simulate typing. This feature makes the bot simulate a typing status before sending a reply, just like a real user would. It helps make the interaction feel more natural and human-like for the person receiving the message. Next, I've made the node red flow more advanced. Now, when the received message contains a machine number, Node-RED will look up the current OEE value for that specific machine. It will then send the OEE information back to the sender via WhatsApp. This allows users to request real-time machine performance just by sending a message. Here is the Node-RED dashboard, where I've added a display for the QR code to connect to the WhatsApp bot. This setup is similar to what I showed in my previous video about using WhatsApp to get real-time OEE values. With this dashboard, users can easily scan the QR code, connect their WhatsApp, and start interacting with the system to request machine performance data anytime.
To wrap up, we started by installing OpenWA on a VPS, created a project folder, and built the index.js file to launch our WhatsApp bot. We tested it with basic replies, then connected it to Node-RED using a webhook for real-time message handling. We also set up PM2 to keep the bot running automatically, and used Visual Studio Code with Remote SSH for easier development. The integration allowed us to send and receive WhatsApp messages, including responding with OEE data when a machine number is sent. Finally, we displayed the QR code on the Node-RED dashboard for easy connection. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next video.